State your full name. My name is John Frank Dresser. And where did you grow up? Grew up in Orange, New Jersey. What unit did you serve with during the Second World War? Graduated from high school in 43. A few months later, I was back in boot camp. Graduated from boot camp in December of 43. Reassigned to North Carolina, joined 10 City, which was forming to become part of the 5th Marine Division. Was there a particular battalion you were with, or a regiment in the 5th Marines? Excuse me? Was there a particular regiment or battalion you were with? I was with the 2nd uh, Battalion, 13th Regiment. What was your job in the Marine Corps? I was one of the observers and also one of the people to s survey the, the uh, instruments and, and line them up. Okay. Now, did you, where else did you train in the United States? Trained in the United States? Trained in Hawaii at Camp Tarawa. I'm going to ask you that one again, uh, John. Where did you train in the U.S.? Trained in the United States, in Camp Pendleton, and uh, also in Hawaii with Camp, at Camp Tarawa. When did you find out you'd be going to Iwo Jima? That's a funny thing. i got to tell you what happened. We were on a field trip in Hawaii, and our radio man tuned in on Tokyo Rose, and Tokyo Rose told us that we were going to Iwo Jima. Was that your first engagement, Iwo Jima? Yes, that was my first and only, but I'll always remember that one. Were there any other men you were with from New Jersey? One fellow was from a, a neighboring county and then there was another fellow, I don't know where he was from, in New Jersey, but he was a New Jersey guy. Now, you enlisted in the Marines, right? You enlisted in the Marine Corps? Uh, it was what? Did you enlist? Oh, yeah. I volunteered for the Marine Corps. <laughs> I volunteered to go in the service as soon as I graduated high school. Why did you cho choose the Marines? Always wanted to be a Marine. Why? Just drew me like a magnet. Drew me like a magnet. What did you think of the training? Was it hard? I had a ball during boot camp. People think I'm crazy, but I enjoyed every day. And how were the drill instructors? Great. Great. But they were mean, right? No, they weren't mean to me. I was used to that kind of thing. Why? Because you grew up in the mean streets of Jersey? I grew up with a tough father. A tough dad, huh? I mean a tough father. So you were pretty excited to hear that you guys would be finally going to the Pacific. Yeah. How long did you train in Hawaii for? Six months. Wow, that's a long time. Long time. Ice cold showers from... Water melting from the top of the mountain. Now, had the 5th Marine Division been anywhere yet at that point? No, we were the beginners. Wow. We were the first of the 5th, and we were given the initial assignment of taking Suribachi. So once you guys departed Hawaii, which I assume would be January maybe of 45? That's correct. Where did you guys go from there? We traveled for 38 days, 38 nights, to get to Iwo Jima. We laid off Saipan for four or five days. Yeah, that would be it. On Saipan, did you see the, the destruction from the battles there? We never left the ship, but we saw the B-29s 
taken off, looked like there was one every couple of minutes, and filled the sky. So you're floating around, and you don't hear what island you're going to until you hear the broadcast from Tokyo Rose. What else was she saying? She said that we were not going to be able to take the island and that they had a big surprise for us. And I think the surprise was the idea of the enemy being in this, in the uh, ground instead of on the ground. So February comes rolling around. Right. And it's time to land on Iwo Jima. Did you transfer onto a different ship? Like a, a landing craft, or? Yeah, I transferred onto a duck, and I went in on a duck, and it was driven by a Coast Guard guy. He didn't go all the way in, he went to a little cove, and I was at the far end of the duck. I didn't realize how high it was. I went over the side and there was nothing under my feet. The tide is going out and it's pulling me out. I'm all fully dressed. I throw everything off. I'm fighting to get back to that duck. I'm leaping, leaping, leaping. And after a while, I finally get my hands on it and pull myself in. But I, for a minute, I thought I was a goner. What, what was, um, so let me back up. So you were on a, a bigger landing craft, right? And then the ducks, did they pull up to the side or did they go inside of the ship to, to pick you up? No, they didn't pick me up. I, I, before you got on the duck, what were you on? Were you on one of the big LCVTs? L, L yeah. LVPs? Yeah, okay. right. And so how did the ducks pick you up? Did you guys have to walk down a rope down to the ducks? or No, we walked right into the duck. The so, duck was on the ship. So they were inside the ship? Right. Okay, those are the big landing ship tanks then. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. How many guys were on the duck? Four. Four. Only four Marines? Four of us. Okay. And what, what was the date? Do you remember what the date was? Was it the, do you know what date or wave you were on to Iwo? The what? Um, the, the date you you headed for. The Iwo. day we got there? Yeah. February 19th. So it was day one. Day one, it was Monday morning. Okay. Were you a particular wave? Were you a, the second? Third wave. Third wave. The first wave went in. They didn't get any opposition. They wanted them to come in, so they stopped them at a certain spot. But the second wave broke through, and then they opened up on us. Oops. When, and you were the third wave? Third. So going in and being the third wave, did you see burning vehicles or? So a lot of mortar shells coming our way. And they were landing in the water? Oh yeah, hitting, hitting some of the vehicles too. So you saw destroyed du other duck boats that were destroyed. Oh yeah, plenty. We we at this point you were a motivated, brave marine. But did you start to finally get nervous seeing this? Yeah. So the driver gets into a cove area, mm -hmm. and you go over, and you realize I went over too soon, maybe. Right. Or he. Did he tell you to get off the ship? I mean, off the duck boat? No, he didn't say a word to us. Just pulled in the cove and that was it. So we just automatically, it? we just automatically jumped out. That's the way we were trained. So, uh, did all four of you jump out? Did uh, did every all the Marines on the duck boat jump off? All four. And did they all try to come back on? No, they proceeded on to the beach. Okay, but you pulled yourself back on. I pulled myself back on, then I went off again, making sure that I'm going to land on something solid. Mm. When that happened, I ran to the beach.
Did you lose your weapon the first time you went overboard? I lost my weapon. Mm -hmm. What were you carrying? M1. Wow. So then when you finally headed to the beach, you didn't have a, a, a rifle. When I hit the beach, I had no helmet. I had nothing. Zero. I didn't have anything that you can mention. I'm on the beach just like I'm bareback. I have nothing. What do I do? I'm looking up 300 and some feet. Do I go up there? What's on the other side? So I decide I'm going to take a shot at Red Beach 1, which is over there down by uh, the uh, Mount Suribachi. And I go down to Red Beach 1, and there's no way to get in. The guys that were landing on Red Beach 1, I don't know how they got through that little pass. So I went back to Red Beach 3. I'm on Red Beach 3. I said, I got a chance. It, I go up to, to, to the area. When I'm going up there, I'm walking by some makeshift stairs that the enemy put in. And they put it in from the beach all the way up to the area where the combat is. And I see Marines standing in slump. Every one of them was dead. As they were going up those stairs, there must have been a couple of hundred stairs. Every one shot between the eyes. And you get just a little trickle, a very, very slight trickle when you hit between the eyes. And I saw all those guys going up there. My heart went out to them. It was terrible. So, so you're running back and forth on the beaches. There's dead Marines. Um, are, are, you, are there any mortar rounds or artillery landing near you while you're on the sand? Nope, there was nobody around. I saw one man walking up the area, and it turned out to be one of the lieutenants in our outfit. And he was assigned to be the forward observer. So did you did you end up taking those stairs or no? I walked side by side of the stairs. I wasn't on the stairs. But I walked by the stairs all the way up from the bottom to the top. So you get to the top. What happens next? Then I find my outfit. Right then and there. There's my guys. So you join them, and do you, what, did, do you have a weapon at this point? No, I'm still looking for a weapon. So tell me what's next. I gotta hear it. So you join, you find your outfit. Yeah. I now joined. what's your objective? What's the mission now? Now we're getting set to fire our weapon, seven to seventy-five uh, millimeters. Then I learn that John Bassalon was killed. And he was killed right by our, our, our outfit. So word spread that quick. Yeah. Hmm. So one, the of the fellas, uh, one of the fellas wanted to show me his stuff that was on the ground. I didn't want to see it. Because I met Bassalon for a couple of minutes in uh, Los Angeles. When we were at Camp Pendleton. And he was a Jersey boy. Yeah. Wow, this is awesome. Powerful, powerful stuff. The 75 millimeter, it was a self propelled uh, gun, right? No, no. It, it was, it's an artillery piece. Right, yep. It, we, we had to feed it. Okay. So, how many men to that, to that artillery piece? And when did you start your fire missions? I would say within 15, 20 minutes after we were all orientated. Who brought the guns on the on the beach? That happened before 
I went there. So they were towed. That was the first wave. Yeah. But did they have to drag them with a vehicle, or did they? Did the guys? Pull they them? pulled them up the up the beach on the strength. At this point, you hadn't seen any Japanese soldiers yet, right? Mm-hmm. From what I understand, I heard it was almost impossible to see a Japanese soldier on Iwo Jima. You won't see that guy until he's next to you. Mm-hmm. So you. At, when did you when you started firing the artillery pieces? Wh- who was uh, were they calling for artillery fire? The infantrymen? Yes. Do Do you yeah. know what? It, yep. Go ahead. I we don't know what the targets are, mm-hmm. but we know when we're firing at them. Okay. So you just had you had cord you had coordinates. Yeah. To f- shoot, and it could be pillboxes. It could have been enemy in the trenches or something. Well, that the the. the uh, the fellow observer's calls. He picks the spots. How many shells do you think you shot that first day? <laughs> I can't tell you. The second day we were running out of ammo. The third day we ran out of ammo. And we were waiting for the ammo to get in, which is number one in war. We hear a guy hollering. Fox battery, where are you? You're not supposed to answer. I never could figure that out. But anyway, we got together and we went and looked for them. We found them and we guided them back into our position and we got our ammunition. Because it could have been the Japanese trying to trick you. Yeah, that's what we think. Mm -hmm. So, third day, you run out of ammo, you finally get resupplied. Uh, At this rate, did you uh, have any counter battery coming your way? We did, but we, we had time fire, and we knocked them out. And then that's when I got hit with a piece of shrapnel. What, what day was this? Was this the fifth day, third day? I don't remember the day. Uh, maybe seven, eight, I don't know. T- tell me about the day you got wounded. I got wounded near my family jewels. Really? And I thought I was finished. But they did a good job. Was it a mortar round that hit struck you or artillery? It was artillery. Did anyone else get hurt in your area? On your gun? When I got hit, it's just the same as getting shot. Was your was your howitzer damaged? No. What about the Marines on your battery? Did they get hit too? Yeah, some of us got hit, yeah. Were you bleeding heavily? <laughs> yeah. And did you yell out Corman? I passed out. After I got hit and I went down, I passed out. When's the next time you woke up? I was in the tent, in the tent hospital. On Iwo Jima or on a ship? I think, I'm not positive, I think it was Iwo and they transferred me to the hospital ship. I think that was the way it went. <clears throat> Do you, so when the explosion happened, did you kind of look down, see blood, and then pass out? Or was it almost immediately? Uh, it's just a little a tiny scar right now. Yeah. At that time, you could put three or four fingers in it. When you re- reawoke in the hospital, I'm assuming the first thing you did was look down there. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. It must have said, thank God, I can still have a family, you know? Yeah. Did you ha- battle any... A inf- lot, of, lot of pain. Oh, did you battle a lot of infections and stuff? No, they treated me great. I was lucky. They treated me great. Do you remember the day you got the purple heart pinned on you? I, I don't know if I do or not. I don't 
came around the barracks, that's when it happened. I really, I might have been on Guam. I might have been on Guam when that happened. John, did you lose any friends during the war? Yeah. Oh, yeah. On Iwo or? On Iwo. Oh, yeah. And these are men you, you trained with, right? And yeah. Did you ever go back to Iwo Jima to visit? 25 years later. And it was completely different. It was not a defoliated island. It was all vegetation like crazy. How long did it take you to, to recover from your wounds? Four or five months. That was some delicate stuff. Sent me back to uh, the Naval Hospital base in Hawaii. And for a, when you came home, you told me you became a, uh, were you a, a corrections officer? No, when I came home, my first job was being a policeman in my hometown. And then I gave that up. And a couple of years later, I took the exam for the uh, sheriff's department. And I joined the sheriff's department in uh, May 1 of 1950. And then when did you retire? I retired from the jail in 1978. I went back into the system in 81, and I stayed there until 1991. So all in all, I put a lot of time in. Thank you for letting me come interview you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And I, I appreciate your service, and from one Marine to another, Semper Fidelis. Semper Fi.